Hey Warp Ride Wargamers, really glad you caught the last video. Welcome to our second video in the series of how to play 7th edition. If you've met this video first, I highly suggest you go back to the first video and check that one out first. Now, what we're going to talk about today is some core mechanics and really what I think is the most important rule, which is what it's called. The most important rule of this game is have fun. Okay, it is a game for fun. Now we show how to play competitively on this site and anytime something gets competitive, people sometimes get their feelings hurt. But I know how that feels. Been there, done that. I've had really, really, really bad games that I couldn't control. Okay, I've had friends tell me that I look like I was gray as a ghost with lividness. Okay, it happens. But have fun. If you're not having fun, your opponent's not having fun. And if you're not having fun doing something, why are you doing it? And don't tell me your job, that's to make money. You know why you do that. Now, so have fun. Don't be these guys. Those guys aren't having fun, all right? They, they're combative, they're, you know, they're not gonna wanna play each other again. Even if you're playing for, you know, the top prize of a million dollars, you gotta have fun, okay? Otherwise, it's pointless. Um, try to be these guys. Now, this is how you do it right. Same situation, this is how you do it right. is how you take something that's happening against you, do it with grace, have fun for both people, and the outcome stayed the same. You just had fun doing it. Okay, so most important rule, have fun. All right guys, just have fun. Now, what we're gonna go into next is the core mechanic of measuring. That seems so simple. Measuring. All right guys, so as you see, I've got a little bit of a a field set up here. I want to show you about the measuring in the game. Now we use uh, standard tape measure, okay? This one here. Uh, I, I really like this one because it automatically locks. So that's me, and it's really small. Standard tape measure. Okay, so uh, you can measure any distance at any time. Okay, so for example, let's say I'm in the middle of a game. Now, honestly, if I was in the middle of a the game, these chaos bikers would have a problem. Okay, but let's say I'm in the middle of a game. So I want to know how far it is from the bikes to the riptide. So I'm going to sit here, I'm going to measure, all right? One thing to note, I'm measuring from the edge of a base to the edge of a base. This is about six and three quarters of an inch. Okay, we don't need to deal with fractions very often, but it means it's not, it's, you know, it's greater than six and less than seven. So we need a seven. That's the distance we would call that, is a seven. And the distance here. Now, sometimes you got to work around terrain. As you can see, I'm doing here. Okay, that one's uh, about 13, okay? The distance here. Now what's great is you can plan ahead using this. For example, let's say I've got guys inside of this cool tank and they get out six inches and then they fire 15 inches. So I've got a grand total of, what's that, 31 inches to work with? Nope, 21 because my math is bad. So I'm gonna check to see what it would take to get out. So if I take here and I get out six inches, I'm gonna take a gun, I'm gonna mark, boop, out six inches. Now I'm gonna check to see if I'm within range. Lo and behold, I'm not. So I wouldn't want to get out there. So I'm going to take it back over here. We're going to go a little bit different path that way. And I am at this point. So now that helps us determine our move ahead of time. It can also help us anticipate the enemy's move. All right, let's say I want to get him far enough away from these guys. Well, what do they need? Earlier we said a seven, so I'm going to move. Now I want you to take note. It is from one edge to the other edge. All right, it's not here to here and go six inches. No, 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 that's more like nine, okay? Take him back. It's this front edge to the front edge. Typically what we'll like to do is I'll set down the tape measure actually on the field, like that, hands free. That way I can move him his distance. That lets the opponent see that I'm moving correctly, which goes back to the golden rule. Don't, you know, don't be a poopy head, don't try to fudge things, okay? And that lets the, the model move very accurately. I see this a lot. So we're like, all right, cool. So I'm gonna move this guy six inches and they go, See what I did there? I'll bring it back. So watch closely. I'm gonna set the dice. 
right where six inches is. All right, again, setting the tape measure down, set the dice. Okay, now I'm going to move him my six inches. Does he pass the dice? He most certainly is. This is called the floating tape measure. Okay, your body naturally wants to work with itself, all right? So what you gotta do is set it down to take out all doubt, all right? Six inches, I can only go that far, okay? And if you can politely point that out to an opponent who might be floating, just say, hey, you know, you're floating, which, you know, is all well and good, but you kind of do this sometimes. You might cheat yourself or something. Always turn it around to be positive for the person you're playing against, and they don't think that you're trying to tell them about how, you know, bad they are. They're not really bad, they may just not know. So you can measure any distance at any time, okay? Uh, and just measure from the shortest points possible, base to base. You can even measure to make sure my guy's in the back here at the top of the screen. You can even make sure, measure to make sure, hey, they're within two inches, right? Yeah, okay, cool. Remember we talked about unit coherency? Cool, I can go ahead and measure that. And you can do that in the opponent's turn. When you're setting up your army at any point, okay? You can measure any distance and it'll help you plan your moves and it'll help you hopefully see what the opponent's thinking. All right, so that's measurement for you. Okay, now we're gonna move on to dice. Ooh, simple concept. You just wait and see. All right, guys, so this is, in this one we're gonna deal with dice, okay? Um, now there's lots of different kind of dice you're gonna see. Uh, most often you're gonna see dice with pips, which are the little dots, okay? Uh, we also have dice that are uh, numbered, which can be quite nice. Okay, so we got number dice, we got pip dice. Uh, most people, myself included, would like to use smaller dice. All right, these little dice right here. Now they're much smaller than the other ones. So you can roll a lot more at once. Um, there's a lot of internet research that talks about how these curved edge dice roll really, really, really bad. Okay, I've rolled really, really, really well with curved edge dice. I've rolled bad with straight edge. To me, it's I mean, the physics is sound. So if you really are like, you know, got to have that edge, get square edge dice. They do roll statistically better, okay? But now we're going to talk a little bit about the dice. So these dice are six-sided, okay, like any good box is. So they're going to have anywhere between six and one. Yay, we use six-sided dice in this game, um, okay? But sometimes we need more than just a six. In this particular case, if I roll the dice, I get a four. All right, if I roll the dice in this case, I get another four. Let's roll a different color dice. I roll the two. So we're going to need to read those as they are. But sometimes you're going to have a different case. We have dice that are called D3. All right, now here's how we do it. I've actually seen this done different ways. Um, some, not all of them make sense to me, but I'll tell you what they are and I'll show you how we do it. So one of the ways, this is how we like to do it, is we will take the number and the numbers, which one to six, and we'll divide them evenly. So one and two is one. Three and four is two. Five and six is three. So in that case, if I roll a D3, I rolled a three. Okay, if I roll a D3 again, I rolled, well, I don't want off camera, there we go. I rolled another three. If I roll another one, I rolled another three. I just want you to know, I just rolled three sixes. Wait for it. Oh, I lost it, that's a three. But in that case, I rolled a two, okay? so. That's what's going on there with the D3. Uh, I've seen people do it this way, where one and six is one, two and five is two, and then three and four is three. That way, half the time, you just read the number. So in that case right there, I rolled a three, because three and four is three, all right? That one I rolled a two, because five and six is not three. Five and two is two. That one really just befuddles me. Um, I have to remember too much. I don't like to think that much, all right? So the last way I've seen done it is one is one, two is two, three is three. Four is one, five is two, six is three. It's either the number or you subtract three from it, which isn't too bad, that's a three, okay? That is a two, five minus two is three. So pick the one you like and stick with it. As long as you're consistent, nobody's really gonna give you a hard time, okay? Just pick the one you like and stick with it. All right, so that's a D3. Another case you're gonna have is what's called a D66. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set down a 66-sided dice. Yeah, if you weren't looking, you were looking now. But no, we don't have one of those, all right? Here's how a D66 works. What I suggest is you get two different colored dice. In this case, I've got a red and a black. All right, you pick one dice to be your first digit, 
somewhere between one and six. The next dice is gonna be your next digit, somewhere between one and six. So in this case, what we like to do is we'll call the colors. We'll say red, then black. Roll it, so I got a 61. The 61 is my number, all right? Or I'll do red, then black. That time I got a 15. Now it's easy with number dice. You can also do it with pip dice, red, then black, 52. Okay, and that's in case it was green. Watch me say black for green. Anyway, you can do it the other way, green, then red. 26, just make sure you call it before you roll the dice. Anytime you're rolling a dice, make sure your opponent knows what you're rolling for. Okay, that's pretty, pretty important. Now, another special dice we kind of have is called scatter dice. Now, this is a particular dice. Um, as far as I know, it was made by Games Workshop. It could have very, very well have been in existence beforehand. If that's true, let me know. I like to learn things. Okay, so the scatter dice, as you'll notice right here, has arrows on it, and it has a little target. Now, there are four arrows on each four sides. Okay, and the targets are on the opposite sides of the dice. So that's a scatter dice. We roll it. Sometimes we need to know where the arrow's pointing, because things go that way. Or sometimes you roll and you get a hit, which means it hits right on. Um, that's your basic scatter dice. Normally you will roll this with another dice with it for a distance. For example, if I did that, I go that direction two inches. Okay, so that's what's going on there. Scatter dice, something you need to have comes in very, very handy. Now then, one more thing you gotta know is if you have to divide a dice by a certain number, to be honest with you, I don't think I've ever had to do this, but it's there. So if you take a dice roll and you roll, I rolled a five. Well, you divide it by two. Five divided by two is 2.5. Congratulations. And then you always round to the way that is, the way I understand it, it's the least advantageous to you. Okay, so you always round the number to one or the other. Uh, for me, 2.5 is a three. Okay, if I rolled a six, it goes to a three. For old three, it goes to a two. 1.5 is a two. So you always have to round the number, okay? So I've never had to do that, but you might at some point in time, so that's always good to know. There will be a lot of things in the game that modify your dice roll. For example, you get plus one to your dice roll. One plus one is two. Six plus one is seven, okay? Congratulations, you rolled a seven on a six-sided dice. There are cases if certain ideas stack, you can get even up to plus three, right? Four plus three is seven, again, right? If I roll a two, I'm gonna get a five. So you can modify a dice roll. You might get minus to a dice roll. You always apply those effects after the dice has been cast. Sometimes, and then normally at the beginning of the game, you have a roll off. Now it's a little bit different. You roll a dice, say that's one opponent, they get a three, okay? Say I get another opponent, they get a five. The five wins, the five gets to choose something. Okay, there's roll-offs. Uh, those happen, so just compare the two dices together, or die, I should say. Uh, then you've got re-rolls. Okay, here's what a re-roll is. If you roll a dice and you're allowed to re-roll it, you pick up the dice and you roll it again. I know that's hard, okay? But no, you roll that exact dice again. One of the rules, you can never re-roll a re-roll. Gotta say that again. You can never re-roll or re-roll, no matter why. So let's say I rolled, I get to re-roll that one. Well, let's say that when I roll this dice, I get to re-roll once. Well, I've already re-rolled it, and I rolled a one again. I can't re-roll it again. You can only do it once, no matter why. They don't stack, it doesn't matter. You can never re-roll a re-roll. The only exception is in a uh, roll-off. You re-roll those as many times as it takes to get a winner. Okay, randomizing. There's a lot of cases where you have to randomize things. Okay, for example, I've got here four little towel dudes. Okay, I need to randomize which one actually got hit by some sort of thing. All right, so I've got four guys. We do this different ways. I actually, I like to use a random number generator. We live in the age of technology. I have a cell phone, it has a random number generator. Hold on. Um, I have an opponent of mine who absolutely refuses to do that. Okay, I don't blame him. Okay, his, his thoughts are, he's, he tells me, you wouldn't do this, but somebody could actually rig a number generator. Yes, they could. It's very easy. Okay, so if you don't use a number generator, don't. Uh, we do have dice that are multi-sided. We have eight-sided, ten-sided. We have all sorts of stuff, and then you find some weird combination and it works. Here's what I like to do. It's simple and sweet, and you don't have to get any extra dice. Four guys, okay? I've got to randomize. Let's count them. One, two, three, four. I'm going to re-roll a five and a six until I get one of those results. This is a case where you can re-roll or re-roll. So I'm gonna roll the dice, 
I got a two. So that's my second guy. One, two. He's the one who gets hit and goes down. Okay? Good randomizing. But, but, Omega Warlord, what if you have a whole bunch more peoples and you need to randomize between a whole bunch more peoples and it's too hard to do that? I have more than six. What do I do? Well, you split them into groups. Okay, try to do as evenly as possible. So I'm going to put a group of five and a group of five. Now, you don't actually split them on the table. You just do a group like that. Okay, so here's my group of five and my group of five. Now I'm going to roll the dice and I'm going to say on a four or higher, it's this group. On a three or lower, it's this group. That's a good divide. Okay, it's a 50-50 chance. It's like flipping a coin or you could actually literally flip a coin if you want. So I'm going to roll the dice. I'm going to get a three. So the three or higher or lower, I should say, was this group. Then I start with this group and I've got one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to reroll sixes. I get a one. There he is. Done. Very simple, very quick, no extra dice needed. Okay, that's how you randomize in the game. Split them into groups, roll the dice for the individuals. If you can get them in groups of five or six, it's preferable. Okay? Now then, uh, ah, one of my favorites. Okay? The dreaded Cox dice. What happens when I roll a dice and it lands like this? Well, what number is that? Most people are gonna say that's a five. But, you know, you don't know that. It could have hit and bounced off and gone that way and become a three, okay? Or it could have landed straight and become a five. Or done some kooky thing and gone off the table. Uh, we have two ways that we play, okay? Uh, the first way is, and this is the way I like to play, especially if I'm playing in tournaments, and I always ask my opponent beforehand. I've played it all sorts of different ways, but I ask my opponent beforehand, is if it's not completely flat on the table, you re-roll it. Okay, now again, this isn't the re-roll special rule, I'll move these guys for a minute. This is just you're re-rolling to get your your primary or your first result. So it's flat on the table, I'm good to go. I've seen many a times when it's pretty obvious it would have been like a one, like if it sits like that, that's a one. But it's not flat on the table, so I'll re-roll it. The exact same thing. That could have been a six, but it's not flat on the table, so I'll re-roll it and it becomes a four. Okay, uh, that's one way we play. One of our other guys here, uh, Likes to play, well, it's sitting there. You know, it's kind of cocked over. I'm not sure what it was. Well, if you can put a dice on it. Oh, it's cocked. That dice won't sit. But if it sits pretty level and you put a dice on it, then yeah, okay, it's not cocked. That's a pretty good one. I've even played with a guy who likes to keep every single dice. It doesn't matter which way it's facing. We'll figure it out. Unless it's just completely, you know, messed up. But uh, every once in a while, you know, he'll even have to do re-roll dice. So that's the cock dice. Just agree with your opponent beforehand. All right, and the last one is one of my favorites, okay? Dice on the floor. So, and the rule book even mentions this one. I, I enjoyed it a lot. Um, normally our deal is if you throw a dice on the floor, which you're not just gonna see in this shot, but uh, you throw a dice on the floor, let's say I just zip one across here. Meow. Well, it's still in the shot. Try again. Meow. So I zip one across, it ends up on the floor. We just don't count it as ever having been rolled. Pick it up, roll again. All right, I mean, it's bad enough that you have to go crawling on your hands and knees, probably on some dirty floor of some uh, game store. Not that ours is dirty. You know, our home store is very, very clean. Yay. But, um, you know, sort of some tournament scene, people have been walking around, people have been dropping food. It's bad enough you gotta go get your dice. I'm not gonna make you count it as a miss, but if you wanted to, you could play at home. Hey, you missed the table. Why in the world would you think your guys can hit, you know, a target way over here if you can't even hit a table? It counts as failed, no matter what it is. I don't like that because, you know, people need their chances. It is a game of dice, okay? It is a game of dice. So that's what I like to use. Uh, cock dice, dice on the floor, all sorts of different dice. Okay, don't be afraid to ask to use your opponent's dice. A lot of people have this, you know, dice juju. Those are my dice, you don't touch my dice. If you touch my dice, they'll get bad luck. They're inanimate pieces of plastic, but feel free to believe what you want, okay? So, uh, you know, feel free to ask to use your opponent's dice. So some of the best games I've had, we've had one, one set of dice. You know what? Oh, I want, like, I roll this. Hey, look at that. I got two ones, a three, a two, and a six. The three and six mean something. So I'm gonna take these away and just use these two to roll something else, okay? I think in that case, I killed a guy. Look at that, got a one. So, don't be afraid to ask to see your opponent's dice. Uh, and you know, if you're in a tournament scene and you're like, man, your dice are really, really hot, and you care if I roll them, and they say no, that you can't roll them, uh, 
might want to ask again and then maybe ask to see a tournament organizer because you know I know we're just pushing little plastic men around and we're here to have fun but man there's some people out there and I've never met one personally I've never had a tournament game where somebody's had to use loaded dice but there's people out there that will so don't be afraid all right so thanks for watching the video hope you learned something about dice hope you're uh, figuring out the game uh, next time when we get together we're gonna talk about uh, some markers and templates and some other tests and then we're gonna get into choosing your army, the real, the real fun stuff, okay? So thanks for bearing with me on these, these first three videos. It's the second, uh, third one's next. Don't forget, give us a like, give us a subscribe, give us a share, tell your friends, okay? We're here to help, all right?